Hello everyone, Renee here. I am doing an unboxing of a deck I was gifted. It is called The Secret Language of Birds Tarot by Adele Nozadar and Linda Sutton, published by Schiffer, or actually a division of Schiffer, which is Red Feather Publishing. There's the front of the box, very sturdy, large box. The back gives a little bit of a description about the link between birds and the tarot, and then some examples of the images. So let's take a look inside. And it was shrink wrapped, I took that off, and I also took the wrap off of the cards to make it easier for the video. So here's, whoops, here's the booklet. Sturdy booklet, nice thick booklet. It does tell about the author and the artist, as well as photos of them. There's dedications, the, the table of contents. There is a foreword by Philip Cargom. Introduction about tarot, free will and destiny. And I wanted to read a little bit of this page, The Game of Birds and Gods, A Short History of the Tarot. And it says, you will notice the deck you're holding contains a lot of Italian terminology. This is not only because the artist Linda Sutton lives for much of the time in Italy, but it's also in honor of the origins of tarot cards as we now know them. As Philip Cargom points out in his foreword, we are not certain of the exact origins of the tarot, although there are many theories. I can jump ahead here. It says, what we do know is that as early as 1420, there are references to a certain game of gods and birds, which was commissioned by Duke Filippo Maria Visconti of Milan. So that is why there are Italian phrases on the cards. Like the fool here is il matto, which is Italian for fool or a crazy person. And the bird attributed to this card is the cuckoo. Each card here, we're, we're starting with the major arcana now. Each card has a quote. For the fool, it says, he who has no fixed goal can never lose his way. Each card has some keywords and a description and a black and white photo of the card. Talks a little bit about the card, the significance of the fool and the cuckoo or the card and the bird that's chosen and also a reversal message for the card. Moving on to the magician, Il Bagato, the J. There's a quote by Johnny Depp here. The key words are magical powers, arcane knowledge, elemental forces, lateral thinking, inspiration, and the trickster. And again, it has a description, significance of the magician and the bird that was chosen for this card, which is the J, as well as a reversal meaning for those of you who do reversals in tarot. I usually do not, but I do appreciate when they include that. So yeah, it does that for all the major arcana, and let's see how it looks with the regular minor arcana cards. Jumping forward here, so there we go, Ace of Cups. Talks about the suit, or the four flocks of the minor arcana, cups, wands, swords, and coins, standard four suits. The suit of cups, Kope, the element of water represented by the kingfisher. We've got the Ace of Cups, and again, we have keywords, Question inspired by this card, what can make me happy? Now that's different, I like that. A question associated with each of the um, aces most likely, or maybe every card. Yeah, it looks like every card of the minor arcana. There is a question associated with the card. Gives the drawn upright meaning and the drawn reversed meaning. Moving on to the two and three of cups, four of cups. Question inspired by this card is, what do I learn from boredom? I love that because I've got my own tarot meanings um, in a book that actually would be published sometime, some point in the future. And my key word for the four of, four of cups is boredom. After much research, I came up with the one common word for every deck of tarot, every four of cups, and the key word is boredom. So I love that someone else agrees with me on that phrase. And yeah, so it's it looks very descriptive, interesting. I can't wait to, to dive in and to look at all the meanings and all of the key words and questions and attributed birds. Nice booklet, well made. Let's get the deck out. Sorry, I'm having, I just had my, uh, I just did my nails, so I'm having trouble getting the deck out. 
there we go. Oh, actually, oh, I thought maybe there was a ribbon under there to help get it out. But there we go. So we have the deck now. The backs look like this type, uh, type of dark indigo blue color with a diamond. Pretty simple backs. It's got a, a glossy finish. And here's the fronts of the cards. And again, each card has the Italian phraseology on it. So you do get kind of a quick lesson in Italian when you get this deck. Il Mato is the fool. And we have the magician. Il Bagato, la papesa, high priestess, la emperor, la emperoris, which is empress, and we have the emperor. Okay, so on and so forth. Chariot, justice. Beautiful artwork. Very, very different artwork. There's strength. Hanged man, obviously. Looks like a uh, pelican. Death, la morte. Temperance. Very lovely artwork. I love all of the colors. Um, I'm going to read some more on what medium the artist used. Looks like it could be oil pastels, possibly. But just lovely. Yeah, this card is on the cover. La Sole, I wonder what that is. World? No, it can't be world. The sun? I think it's the sun. Il Sole, yeah, Sol. The sun? Yeah, they're lovely. Beautiful images. And again, if you don't want to see all the images, sometimes I don't want to when I'm um, looking for new decks to purchase, but here we go. So here's the suit of cups, obviously, and they all do have a common color and common birds. So it's basically just that type of bird and that number on there. So this would be 10 of cups. Great. 11 of cups. Okay, this would be princess or page. And then the 12 of cups would be the knight. I'm supposing here. 13 of cups. 14. It looks like they have king before queen, so queen is the highest suit. I love that as well. And then we're on to the next suit, which might be swords. Not quite sure. And just keep going like this. There's the princess and prince, and then probably the king and the queen. And spade is swords. Yes, he's holding a sword, the bird. Okay, so that last one might have been pentacles or wands. This is definitely swords. Again, princess, prince, king, and queen. A stone A. This must be wands. So the first one must have been pentacles. Yes, here's wands. And the fire element affiliated with the wands. Fiery orange and red colors, little bits of yellow. Love it. And there's two extra little information cards here on the back or at the very end. So let's do a little reading here. Try to get these shuffled. Whoops. I'll try to just shuffle them normally. They're a good size. They're larger than standard, but they're not huge. I am able to shuffle them like that. Good. They are still a little bit sticky because they're brand new. I've never used them. Have not shuffled them until now. I think I said before in my last uh, unboxing that when I get a new deck, I like to just relax and watch TV or listen to a podcast and shuffle the deck over and over for an extended period of time, 20, 30, 40 minutes, kind of get my energy in the cards and to also loosen up the paper. 
But these are nice cardstock. They're very sturdy. Do one more time and then we're going to draw. We'll draw three cards and just see what we get. And those will be your messages. If you're watching this video, those are your messages right now. Hopefully I shuffled them decently. I'll do one little cut here. All right, so the first card, all right, three of coins. Oh yeah, because it's got a circle, it's got a coin on it. Three of coins, four of coins, and eight of cups. So let's look in the book to see what those cards mean. Three of coins, four of coins, and eight of cups. All right, coins are, let's see what the word is here. Scritchiole. Denar, denar, I believe, and cups are cope. Okay, so let's find the pentacles in here. There we go. We got three, we have three and four. All right, so the three of coins, this is the first card here. The keywords for this card are hard work rewarded a team effort, skill, and mastery attained. And the question inspired by this card is what is my reward? I like that as well because my key word for the three of coins is rewards. So again, someone did their research as I did and came up with the common denominator throughout the world of tarot. Drawn upright, it says an auspicious card indeed. The three wrens here indicate that you're gaining rewards and recognition for your efforts. These efforts may have required many years learning and honing a craft, and you've diligently applied these skills to the work, which is now at last so highly valued. So this is all about working hard and finally reaping your rewards that are very um, deserving. You're very deserving of those rewards. And then we have the four of coins. And the keywords for this card are stability, responsibility, security. And the question inspired by this card is what is the true meaning of security? Four of coins, yes. And my keyword is similar, stability, security, absolutely. Drawn up right, it says the number four is the number of stability. Think of the four legs of a table or the four walls of a house. And given that the suit of coins signifies riches in whatever form they may take, but with an emphasis on the financial aspect, then it's easy to see what these four wrens are telling us. This is a time of financial stability, prudence, the rewards of diligent effort. Definitely stability financially for whoever's watching this video. So what you've been working hard for and toward, you're going to achieve it and finances will be very stable and secure and steady. And then we have this eight of copes or cups. We'll find that in the book. I think that was the first suit here after the major arcana. Getting to the eight here. All right. Eight of cups, the keywords are moving on, changing a relationship, seeing the bigger picture. Very good. Okay. Yeah, this one, you know, this, the eight of cups in general, it can sometimes have a negative meaning such as greed, you know. Um, no, that's the seven. I'm sorry. The eight. The eight is abandonment, moving on. Yes, moving on, changing a relationship, seeing the bigger picture. The question inspired by this card is who is the most important person in my life? Who is the most important person? Sometimes there's no choice but to leave a relationship and no matter that what its nature, it's tough. Initially, there needs to be a process of total severance and separation. Distance is needed for perspective. The eight birds here tell you that you're strong enough and have the courage to do this. So you have the courage to move on. You have the courage to make this change, to see the better, the bigger, maybe better picture. I love that, beautiful. 
Let's draw just a few more. Why not? Maybe we'll get a major arcana. I'll draw, I don't know, two or three more. Let's see. Whoops. There's a little bit more shuffling here. Okay. So this top one here. Ooh, Ace of Swords. Put that right there. And we got Seven of Swords. So we have Ace of Swords and Seven of Swords. Getting to the Ace first. Okay, the Ace of Swords. The keywords for this card are transformation, innovation, focus, rapid change. The question inspired by this card is what makes me think? Because aces are the mental suit. And it reads, this lone seagull soars high into the air, cutting a swathe in the sky, direct, focused, and sure. The sword, of course, is a symbol of justice, but here it stands for the specific justice of karma, the law of cause and effect, what we reap, we sow. This might be a time of instant karma, all about reconciling the past with current events and on into the future. Your intellect is sharpened and awareness is heightened. This is a good time for any kind of work involving the mind. Wonderful. Good card. And then we have Seven of Swords. Look it up in the book. Okay. All right, Seven of Swords. It says the keywords for this card are scattershot efforts, trying to do too much, skimming the surface of things. Um, yeah, Seven of Swords in general mean an instability, unstable, failed attempts, that type of thing. The question inspired by this card is where are my efforts best placed? The Seven Seagulls here bring with them a sort of seething, boiling energy riven with innovatory ideas and new thoughts that speed through the mind at a rate of knots. The need to get these ideas out means that you're working on lots of different things at the same time, all of which are feeding each other. This is all incredibly exciting and stimulating, but even in the midst of all this, you're aware of the need to rein in intellectually to keep hold of mental discipline and that some of the many projects you're leaning towards do need a level of research and diligent application. So it's definitely about seeing the big picture and thinking clearly before you start making efforts because you don't want to be shooting blindly. You don't want to be making vain efforts or vain attempts to reach a goal or a new goal. All right, there we go. A little reading for you as well as the unboxing of this deck. Again, it's called The Secret Language of Birds Tarot. Beautiful imagery, Schiffer or Red Feather Publishing. Um, I will put a link below to where you can purchase this deck if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching.